In my previous video, I gave my spoiler-free thoughts on Resident Evil 4 Remake, mostly talking about how I felt about it as a game on its own. At the time of this upload, the game has been out for two weeks, so therefore I think it's fair to do a more in-depth video. Full spoilers permitted from this point forward. Some of the stuff from the previous upload will be addressed here again, just covered in more detail. So if you have seen it, there will be a few familiar talking points, but if you haven't, don't feel left out. This one kind of makes the previous upload a bit obsolete. Without further ado, let's talk more in depth about Resident Evil 4 Remake. A couple years back, it was leaked that Capcom was working on a remake of Resident Evil 4. This was something that had a lot of people scratching their heads because RE4 from 2005 is one of the most accessible games you'll ever play, having been released on almost every single gaming device on the market since its original release, and once you get used to it, it holds up quite well. It's not like RE2 and 3, which had made people wonder what it would be like if they had gotten the same treatment that RE1 did when it was remade all those years ago. But to many, the idea of an RE4 remake felt like something you'd do to cash in on the name of such a beloved game. Particularly because the long-awaited remake of Resident Evil 2 proved itself to be a critical and financial smash hit, it being one of my favorite games of all time. Playing the original RE4 and then the remake of RE2 being the games that made me want to be a fan of this series. The fact that Capcom jumped right over games like Code Veronica and RE0 for remakes, which are both main series games in desperate need of some fine-tuning in favor of doing an all-time classic over again once more makes you think the mind was on the money with this one. Also bringing up the age-old debate about what games deserve remakes over another. I did a whole video on this last year. My attitude is simply that I like good games, and since Capcom has been producing so many great ones lately, I'll have no problem saying RE4 Remake is one of them if it was, even if I love the original as much as I do. But I'll admit, even I thought making RE4 over again and stacking up to the original was a pretty tall order. I said as much in my review of Code Veronica from last spring. However, with Capcom seemingly going all in on remaking Resident Evil 4, one of the best games ever made, good luck with that, it seems like Code Veronica is going to get left in the dust barrel, which is a shame. But that changed for me when the game was finally revealed at the PlayStation State of Play last summer. Oh god! Oh god! It can't be! It can't be! <laughs> ah! You may be asking, what changed? Well, I realized that no game has a real reason to exist, so therefore, now that it was finally announced, I stopped caring about the intellectual argument of needing it or not. It exists, and looks freaking amazing. It's a game that I hold dear being done over in fancy new HD graphics and could totally outshine the original in the horror atmosphere department and get even crazier with the action. The potential is limitless. Perhaps it makes me look like a normie or whatever insult you can think up, but that basic nostalgic hook with the promise of doing it even better this time was enough for me to be sold on it. Many fans felt the same, although others were less convinced. Mainly because of the vitriolic reaction certain fans have had towards the 2020 remake of Resident Evil 3. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I think the game gets too much hate. I think it's telling how good the RE series is, given that its worst and most hated mainline games are perfectly functional, albeit frustrating or disappointing. I think RE3 is a poor remake of the PS1 classic, a plethora of missed opportunities to do something cool and interesting, and then in the end became a game that wasn't as good of a game as the RE2 remake that came before it, and it wasn't a good remake of the original either. A game that starts off good enough, but by the end leaves a sour taste in my mouth. I say it's good overall and is worth a playthrough, but is not a must play. I get feeling let down by that game, I really do. I just personally think burning it at the stakes is a little over the top for a game that's pretty harmless at the end of the day. I also felt like using RE3 as a precedent to be skeptical of RE4 is definitely not fair because it's Resident Evil 4. If they didn't deliver the sickest game of all time with this, they'd be in trouble. Silly conspiracy is coming out of this, like how Krauser was gonna get cut from the game to tear down masculinity in men or whatever it is that keeps weird nerds up at night. Hope anyone who fell for that leak can just see how much egg is on their face now. But seriously, I feel like they knew how important it was to do justice to the name Resident Evil 4, and so they wanted to deliver an experience that was RE4, but everything was turned up to 11. Something I was confident of the second I saw gameplay, and I was then more confident of that when I saw further gameplay showcases and trailers, and pretty positive on when I played the Chainsaw demo. And then... More positive on when the near universal perfect scores came out a few weeks back, and then I played the game for myself and said, yeah, they did it. They did the impossible. Before I played the game, I thought I was going to need a couple playthroughs and a long stretch of time to really say which was better since right after launch is too soon, right? Well, by the time I reached the island, my mind was made up. And it's really not recency bias either. I only first played RE4 in 2020, and since then I put over 100 hours into that game. I don't play a game that much unless it truly is an all-time favorite. I just played RE4 for a review four months ago, and I played it again in VR two months ago. The game has been on my mind, needless to say. The two games are easy to compare and contrast because of how the original game is the base of the remake. Now, you'd hope for that to be obvious, given that it's a remake of that game, but RE3 does make that something worth saying. 
RE4 was split into three major segments, the village, the castle, and the island. All three of these are included and feature many of the same areas you remember down to the last detail, but then will greatly expand upon those areas in a fresh new way. The game tells the same story of Leon searching for the president's missing daughter who's been captured by the cult called Los Illuminados, pitting Leon against a horde of aggressive enemies on his mission, which swimmingly leads us into the conversation about combat mechanics. This was a pretty important area for the remake to get right because combat was the main focus of the original release. Its action set pieces, quick time events, and over the shoulder shooting had such an influence over the gaming industry in the years that followed that you'd want that element to be done faithfully. To that end, I think the RE4 remake does the original combat justice in that it's a hectic action shooter, but it's also very different from the original in execution. A major staple of RE4's combat was the fact that Leon could not move while aiming or reloading. This did a couple of things at once. First, players had to pick their positions carefully to avoid getting swarmed, and two, it meant you need to aim carefully since you couldn't reposition yourself while shooting. It was a pretty simple dynamic in hindsight, but its replayability was near endless. RE4's remake changes the dynamic in many ways, first with the basic controls. The original still used the highly responsive tank controls that the classic games did, only with this new third-person perspective. The new version has a much weightier feel to its controls out of want for more realistic movement. This being the first RE game in years to not have a quick turn, for example. However, I never felt like I needed it, when I did in all the previous games. As I said, the movement feels like it has some weight behind it, but I also felt like it was pretty intuitive while playing. Getting to use new moves like the crouch that was beneficial because it allows players to avoid detection and sneak up on enemies. Something the original did not allow, and it adds to the amount of ways players can engage with the combat in the remake, which is definitely a positive. Although I sucked at the stealth in this game, every time I entered a new combat encounter I got caught within 5 seconds, so there's that. As for the act of shooting, things are very different because the player can move while aiming and reloading. So it's still a game of positioning and trying to be precise with your shots, but they've done it to where the amount of enemies warrants you constantly being on the move or else you're going to be taking a beating. But at the same time, running around and shooting wildly is bound to waste ammo because of the fact that the aiming is very shaky. This is something the remakes of RE2 and 3 also did to compensate for the player having more mobility while aiming. The trick being that the aim gets easier to work with if you hold still for a second. So you need to balance avoiding enemies while being precise at the same time, which I think is a more engaging loop than the original was. Although I do think the aiming was a bit too shaky with some of the weapons. The regenerators actually started to annoy me because of the fact that you need to aim for the Plagus Parasite weak spots like the original, but I can barely get the hits in when the ammo I had was low, so it got a bit frustrating. But overall, I thought the combat in the remake was a lot more satisfying than the original, and I think the enemies are a big part of why that is. The basic enemies the original had, like the Ganado and Cultists, are still there, keeping in a lot of the satisfying mechanics like blowing up dynamite as the enemy tosses it to kill them first, or using the flash grenades on Plagus heads for an instant kill. But they also add a bunch of new enemies that fit right in, like these guys who wear animal heads and attack with weapons to do a bunch of damage like a mallet, or the guy who has this arm-mounted machine gun. One of the sickest moments in my playthrough was when I found out you can cause his gun to explode as he's winding it up by blasting that. But every enemy is fun to fight because of the newly added parrying and dodging moves. Parrying was the mechanic I went the most in-depth on in the spoiler-free review. With it, you can block almost any attack in the game if you have a knife. Perfect dodge mechanics are some of my favorites to use in games. See, Royal Guard from Devil May Cry is the perfect example. Both RE3s had a perfect dodge that I happened to suck at using, but this is something I got to grips with immediately. Press the knife button as the icon lights up, or just wait for the attack to come close and press the button and it's blocked. Could be a tossed axe, a pitchfork, or a punch, or a freaking chainsaw, and Leon will deflect it, tear their arm off, or block the attack, and it's satisfying throughout the entire game. Credit to the developers, I totally see what they mean when they said going back to the original RE4 felt weird without parrying, and I must agree. To make sure you can't abuse this ability, knives break if used too often. So now you need to manage your knife's durability meter, something that players need to think about when parrying, when using the knife as an attack or a finishing blow, or when choosing what upgrades to get or escaping a grab. A mechanic I really liked is you have to choose between escaping a grab with a knife at cost to the durability or escaping by mashing X at cost to your health. A direct improvement over the previous two remakes by combining their systems of escaping grabs. It's a few layers of on-the-fly decision-making players the original aren't going to get as the knife has unlimited use and isn't used for nearly as much as it is in the remake. Choice is a core pillar of RE, and I think RE4 Remake scores higher in that category than the original did. For this, and for other reasons we can talk about later. Some attacks can't be parried, and with these you either crouch to escape like the grab or press circle to evade like with the mallet or the scythe. Either way, it's a combat loop that keeps me really engaged with the game. Seeing attacks, parrying them, or then flipping out of the way, always staying on the move, aiming and shooting, and then landing critical hits to roundhouse kick enemies in the head or getting them from behind to do a suplex. It's got so many of the staples from the original, just done in exciting new ways that I believe are genuine enhancements. The fear factor goes way up because of how much smarter enemies are here, and because of how many there are and how ferocious they act as well. I played on normal, but these enemies were definitely playing for keeps, and that was super exciting. Another element that added a lot to the game was craftable ammo. 
Past the original Resident Evil 3, I don't feel like gunpowder was ever a mechanic that was super interesting. That game had the most variety in the mixtures that were worth playing around with. Later games were simpler with it and thus didn't add too much extra choice to the gameplay. The original RE4 didn't have gunpowder at all. Instead, the player was showered with regular ammo drops. This time around, you do get ammo drops from crates and enemies, but never enough to where your supply is endless. Now, you'll also find gunpowder and then crafting materials both small and large. You'll need certain quantities of gunpowder and will need to mix it with either small or large resources to create different kinds of ammo. This had me constantly evaluating current combat situations and deciding on the fly if I needed rifle ammo or shotgun ammo or what have you. Or just saving them because I thought waiting to get enough for magnum ammo was worth it. Say it with me, on-the-fly decision-making that could affect later scenarios is a core pillar of the RE series and this remake just has that on lockdown. I also feel like I never had much ammo to go around by the end of the game which adds to the fear and tension of the late game. Something I was pretty excited about was how guarding Ashley was going to be handled in the remake. I heard in pre-release that Ashley wasn't going to have a health bar and wouldn't be able to hide and become immune from being captured. I was hyped for this because I thought it would add to the tension, but in execution, I felt like this was an element the original did better. Now, these statements were true. So in theory, it should be more difficult because if Ashley takes a big hit, then you have some time to help her before she gets hit again and dies. Plus, you don't choose between her following you and her just standing there like a statue. She'll either follow you directly or try to stay out of the way. Maybe the harder difficulties fix this, but on normal mode, I felt like Ashley was a non-factor in combat for me more often than not. That isn't to say there weren't moments where things got tense. The part outside the church was actually a big one, but I think the original wins out in challenge and decision-making here. Ashley having her own health bar forced players to decide between healing Leon or Ashley and choosing between extending Leon's health bar or Ashley's, which is a layer of strategy completely removed from the game. Which would be fine if I felt like the one-hit death system had more of an impact, which I thought was lacking. Ashley even got to hide during difficult encounters like the one with the two chainsaw ladies at the debut of the spiky regenerator, when I had thought going into the game that you would have to protect Ashley through all of that. But I'm guessing the reason they did all this is because of the fact that defending Ashley is easily the most infamous element of the original Resident Evil 4, players finding her annoying. Can't say I ever did, guess I'm just that good at the game. But simply put, having a partner character that causes frustration would just make players not like the character by extension. On that note, I'd say the devs of the remake struck a nice middle ground between the original RE4's defending Ashley's system and, say, The Last of Us, a series the remake definitely has taken mechanical inspiration from, where Ellie in the first game was entirely free of danger for like 99% of the campaign. Still needing to help Ashley and make sure she doesn't get caught while dealing with all these enemies is a fine balance between two different approaches to handling this, but I was actually hoping for the tension to go up from the original when it went down in this regard. If the intention was for people to like Ashley more, it definitely worked on me, though. Never disliked her to begin with, but here I just thought that her character and the story trying to help Leon as much as possible made her feel like a real person. The devs then used the partner dynamic to allow Ashley to bring other positives to the experience, like her saying, nice shot if you land a good one, or just having more reactions to things that happen, which makes her feel more like a real person. More importantly, though, is the way they used the partner system to open up the exploration. RE4 was a pretty linear game, the maps of the village or the castle being large, but taking players on a linear track nonetheless. The exploration value came from finding hidden treasure and selling it for a price. In the remake, they do a lot more of that classic RE exploration of reinvestigating older areas once Ashley joins you. Like investigating the chief's attic by giving Ashley a boost to lower the ladder you couldn't reach alone, finding all sorts of hidden treasure up there. The village chapter gets a lot of that replay value, but the game has plenty of examples of open-ended level design, like the part after Del Lago where the player gets free reins over this boat to explore the lake and find hidden goodies alongside the items needed for progression. Or how you still play as Ashley for a bit in the castle, but once you regain control of Leon, you can explore some of the areas she did and get optional rewards out of it. It's such a perfect way of integrating more of that old-school RE design into a game that moved away from that direction. Optional tasks are in abundance throughout RE4 Remake, as the game has a long list of side quests you can complete, like destroying all the blue medallions in an area, or ridding a room of pests, or defeating a really tough enemy. The side quests reward you with spinels that you trade with the merchant. This system has also received some boosts. Like before, you can buy weapons, sell inventory, and upgrade weapons. What has changed is that you can get the aforementioned trading menu where you do the side quests and the rewards can be spent on some important items like treasure maps and the stock for the TMP and the Red Nine. As for changes to returning systems, you can buy recipes for more ammo crafting and you can upgrade your knife's durability and can repair a broken one with cash and same with the body armor while still getting to upgrade the other weapons ammo, reload speed, rate of fire, and all the good stuff you could do in the OG game. Selling treasure was significantly streamlined because in the original you'd find all these loose treasures and then only specific things would combine with the treasures to match maximize their value. Having specific treasures to look for may be more challenging or whatever, but it feels really unnecessary considering how item drops are random. Here you find multicolored gemstones of two different shapes. Different treasures match with different shapes, and you get different price multipliers depending on what color combinations you do. 
As I said, it was significantly simpler, and thus I enjoyed it much more than the original. The dev team claimed they wanted to take RE4 and dial everything up to 11, and I think that intention is very visible throughout the entire game. Although in terms of accuracy as a remake, Resident Evil 1 still stands at the top for getting the most complete translation from original to remake. RE4 does not feature everything that was in the original. For example, the fight with U-3 has been cut from the game. Some segments have been altered as well while still making it into the game. Here's my take on this. RE2 and 3 were a lot worse with this for one main reason. In those games, I feel like the alternatives were not great. For example, this bit with the alligator in the sewers was not a super amazing encounter in RE2 on PS1, however the remake's hastily shoehorned in version is even worse. So you don't feel like it's fully capitalizing on its potential as a remake. Another example being the AB system of RE2 also feeling haphazard in the remake when it was pretty decently fleshed out in the original. RE3 is a case where it maintains so few of the things the original did to stand out, like the choice system, the levels and puzzles, the gunpowder mixing and all that, and then does nothing special in place of those things to where it's not an amazing game on its own or as a remake. I still I still think RE2 maintains the spirit of the original in so many other ways that I don't mind, but I hope you see what I mean. Cutting content in a remake is fine by me, or even altering content, I just have to see the improvement in it. With RE4, the remake took me longer to beat than the original while also overstaying its welcome less. The OG RE4 doesn't feel overly long to me, but when I replay it, it's also noticeably not a short game like the previous ones were. A lot of fans start getting burnt out by the island, which I think is thanks to just how long the castle segment goes on for. So I'm definitely in favor of just fusing the giant robot with the ascending tower part. You get to do both and have an exciting new set piece while also tightening up the pace of the game. Then a boss like U-3 is one of the lesser parts of the game for me, so it being gone is a choice where I get why they did it. Instead, piling more attention into regenerators and altering set pieces like this chase scene into a combat arena with enemies coming from every direction that you have to fight off while defending Ashley who's operating the crane. Combining this part with the wrecking ball scene in the original, getting the joy out of both, creating a fresh set piece that once again tightens up the pace of the game. There are so many moments that I saw and I thought, that was a great idea. Like, you get captured at the start of the game and then just escape this random house into an enemy rush that you progress forward from. Now they converted this underground area from the original into the jail that you escape from. On the left is the path forward, but on the right is the enemy encounter from the original that you now enter from the back to recover the item needed to progress forward on the left path. Getting more satisfaction out of stealth, combat, exploration, and world design all at once by making one very small change. Then a lot of parts were enhanced from the original, like the minecart chase. I was on the edge of my seat blasting enemies and keeping the cart balanced. It was awesome. Speaking of enhancements, this comes with the part of the game where Luis is following you and helping you out, which I think did wonders for the story. Having a useful AI partner builds the player's connection to that character, like I was talking about earlier. So Luis bantering with Leon while fighting and being useful himself makes me like him much more. In addition to that, the writing was far superior for him in the remake. On my first playthrough of the original game, I kept forgetting he even existed at all since he'd drop in and out of the story whenever it was needed. So when he got a big death scene, it felt pretty comedic. In the remake, he appears much more often and as I said, helps the player out in combat more than once. But at the same time, it's an uneasy alliance at first because of the fact that they add Luis having worked for Umbrella as a part of his backstory which makes Leon hesitate to trust him. As if being a part of Las Plagas research wasn't bad enough. But having been a part of such disastrous efforts and wanting to clear his conscience felt really believable. So when he did die, even though I should have been expecting it, I still had an oh no reaction. Leon lighting Luis's last cigar was a sweet moment between them as well. Luis being killed by Krauser was also a quality addition, as it gives the player more of a resentment against him in the boss fights. When I felt like Krauser came out of nowhere in the final act of the original story. I guess Sadler doing it himself was supposed to have the same effect in the original, but I like Sadler being a mysterious figure the game keeps building up to prior to the island, over him showing up a couple times throughout the story. But anyway, this version of Krauser has some things I like and some things I don't. In the boss fights, it's amazing. The knife broke the battle in the original game, so they instead made knife parrying the entire point and it was really fun to play. It was like a playable version of the knife cutscene from the original. With the benefit of hindsight, the writers were able to tie Leon and Krauser's backstories from the Operation Javier mission that was in the game Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles. I've yet to play that game, I will soon for a video this year though, so I can't comment too much on what it really means for the characters because I haven't seen it, or even if this is an accurate depiction of what happened in that game, or if it's just name dropping fan service. but still, in theory, I think tying the backstory into the current motivations is an improvement. Although I think Krauser having seemingly nothing to do with Ada and Wesker was a downgrade from the original story as it gave him more to react to, as he and Ada had these conflicting interests throughout the original. So unlike Luis, I think Krauser had some interesting and good moments here, but some I thought the original made more interesting. Where I thought the story did a really good job was portraying Leon's trauma from the past. In the OG RE4, I thought Leon's past in RE2 was pretty matter-of-fact and unimportant. 
It's explained in this dialogue between him and Lewis at the start of the game, but it doesn't come off like it matters that much to Leon past the opening monologue. Here, a driving force of his character is that he wants to do it right this time. He wants to save Ashley not just because it's his mission, but because he can't escape the pain of seeing so many innocent people die in Raccoon City. I thought RE2 Remake stating Leon wanted to be a police officer to help people adds more weight to the pain and loss he went through that night, and to see it still haunts him to be one of the five people who survived that situation is a quality addition. He's still not surprised to see Ada alive in this version of the story, but you can also see he seeks closure with what happened in RE2 that he didn't seem to care about in the original. Which is something the PS1 version of RE2 had set up, so that was a missed opportunity from the original RE4 that is capitalized upon in the new version. That's not to say Leon loses the charm he had in the original, though. This game is still littered with great quips, both in cutscenes and in gameplay, trading one-liners back and forth with some of the major boss fights, all of which were incredibly fun to fight, I might add. But sticking to the writing, I especially liked the parts where Leon doesn't have time for melodramatic villain speeches. You have been bestowed with lore, Sadler. You talk too much. You fail to... I am Osman Sadler, the speaker for our lore. Tell someone who gives a shit. Although, there was one massive missed opportunity. They cut the gag where Salazar talks to a speaker and Leon just shoots the speaker and hurts Salazar's ears. When I saw a PA system in the castle, I thought for sure you could shoot it yourself and cause the same effect. That would have been hilarious, but instead he just cuts himself off and quietly laughs if you do that. Which, if you ask me, was a big letdown. RE4's original story has a lot of charm to it. It gets me to laugh both with it and at it, depending on the scene. Plus, its action cutscenes were a lot of fun to watch with its 2000s Matrix-style influences. But I think this version of the story does a better job crafting a narrative you actually care to see the end of, building arcs and mysteries that keep you invested. Like Leon and Ashley being infected with Las Plagas. This was relegated to cutscenes only in the original, and not even that often either. In the new version, the parts where it is a story focus feel more dramatic, like Ashley trying to kill Leon when she's being corrupted by the virus. And then the player gets to feel the effects of the virus in these rooms where the red-clad cultists are amplifying the effects of the virus, distorting the screen and your movements. So it doesn't get in the way of gameplay most of the time, but is kept in the back of your mind throughout the entire campaign campaign, which is definitely an improvement. Now, an area I was thinking they would be improving on is the story's connection to the Umbrella plot, but instead it was an area that I thought was pretty underdeveloped by the end. RE4 was trying to get away from the series' as tropes and cliches, so they established right at the beginning that Umbrella went out of business after it was exposed that the T-Virus was the cause of Raccoon City's destruction. Therefore, RE4 was free to go in a new direction. This is not mentioned in Leon's opening monologue in the remake, so I was thinking it would be more of an active mystery, especially once it was revealed that Luis was once an Umbrella scientist. However, it is mentioned that Umbrella is finished, but it's never elaborated on past that point. Leon saying to Ada that the whole world changed after the fall of Umbrella, but we don't get any details on on that either. I feel like this is another reason why not remaking Code Veronica was a mistake. That game took place after Raccoon City was blown up, but before Umbrella was put out of business, so a remake of that title could have ended in a way that concluded the story of Umbrella in a more satisfying way, and then go on to this version of RE4 and it would have worked out much better. But instead, I feel like this game was building up an Ada DLC campaign and a remake of RE5, that being what I think is the worst case scenario. But I'll tackle this one piece at a time. An Ada DLC campaign seemed pretty obvious to happen before the game even released. It would be a natural expansion since the PS2 version of RE4 included the Separate Ways campaign for Ada. An expansion on that would be pretty cool, especially since Ada was hard to get a read on in this game. She's still working for Wesker in this version, but comes off more emotionless in the story than she did in the original. But still, seeing the story of RE4 from Ada's perspective will definitely be useful in clearing up the gaps. I really believe that after seeing this extra ending they added where Ada does not deliver the sample of Las Plagas to Wesker because she's not going to help him kill billions, when the original never said what was going to happen with that. This scene also setting things up for the RE5 remake, and like I said, that's what I'd want to see the least from the next RE game. Now, to be consistent with what I've said, good games are good games, so if that's what the RE5 remake would be, I'm there. However, I just feel like diving into that game isn't their best option. I think an RE Engine do-over of RE1 and Code Veronica would be important because those were the games that built up the rivalry of Chris and Wesker that concluded in RE5. At least RE1's remake, RE0, and even Code Veronica X are accessible on everything nowadays, but the issue is just that a lot of new players refuse to try the old games with the old controls. So that's a lot of context new players will be missing out on, as RE1 set up the whole thing, and CV brought Wesker back from the dead with superpowers, and RE0 fleshed out his backstory with William Birkin and all that. RE5 is actually a game I've yet to play, so I can't comment on if the game itself needs a remake as much as CV or RE0 sorely do, 
but for many reasons, I feel like tackling that game after some of these other main series installments will be for the better. But we're at a point where RE4 2023 is one of the fastest selling RE games ever, so I'm sure they're going to want to keep the momentum going in RE5 Remake or RE9 instead of just going back to redo a game that already got a remake and games that are comparatively more obscure than RE4 or 5. But of course, that's speaking about the future, when right now I'm talking about Resident Evil 4's remake as a game. If it wasn't clear already, I thought the RE4 remake was absolutely fantastic. I had high expectations for this game. It looked great, the demo was super fun to play, and it's a remake of an all-time classic done in the modern RE style, which has almost exclusively delivered non-stop bangers in the last couple years. But this game took those high expectations and exceeded them. When fighting against bosses like the Chief or Salazar or Sadler, it kept hitting me. This is better than the original. I never thought it was possible, but these epic boss fights were like the entire game summed up. Same basic idea, but done over in exciting new ways that take advantage of all the gains the third person action genre has seen since 2005 and uses these new mechanics to take things that were great and making them even better. Salazar flying around the room and spewing projectiles you dodge was something I wouldn't have thought of, but when I played it, it was awesome. I got my butt kicked here several times, but then after like the sixth death, I turned around and saw a hidden merchant shop full of healing items, and that's when I was like, oh, it's on, and I won first try after that. Moments like that are things I remember about a game long after playing it. Then going on the internet and seeing all the creative speedrun strats and hidden details the devs put in that shows this was a labor of love from all involved. Whether you think RE4 deserved a remake or not, I'm just really happy to say that as far as remakes go, this one was pretty top tier. I'll always hold the original RE4 close to my heart. It was a game that got me into the series and I've poured countless hours into it. But I just knew while playing this remake that this is the superior action title. I didn't think it was going to be possible. I thought it would take lots of playthroughs to really decide, but for me, this was RE4, but more. Some things I liked about the original more as I've discussed, be they story or gameplay, but I think both stand up as phenomenal games that are worth your time and attention. Similar to RE1 and 2, where I think the originals are still fun to play, even if I prefer the remakes by quite a bit. I will still go back to RE4 in the future and have fun with it, but now there's a different take on it that is also great, and for me, that's something I'm happy about. I suppose I could keep talking about this game for ages, but I just thought it was important for me to discuss in depth the things I loved about this game and why I felt like it was a beautifully done expansion on the original, which is also one of my favorite games of all time. Meaning that the remake is another one of my favorite games ever. Definitely stands alongside RE2 2019 as my favorite game in the series. Now, which one of those two is my favorite RE game? That's a more complicated matter. It's harder to answer since both grabbed me for completely different reasons. But I'm sure one day I'll have an answer to that, and then I'll probably change my mind afterwards. But now, I'm just kind of rambling on. So let's wrap it up. To do so, I'll say what I always do. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time.